I'm with Carrie McCoy from Deaf Heaven, and uh, we're meeting for the first time. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> Can you remember one of your early, early things? Early riffs? The um, worse and more embarrassing, the better, of course. Let me think. The let me think. I was in. <laughs> I was in this like band that was when I was like 13, in Northern California, like where I'm from. In like the early aughts, every band pretty much wanted to sound like like late 90s like AFI and like nerve agents kind of thing you know a minor type like a <laughs> that type of like super like like overly dramatic kind of thing to like a fest. So was that one of yours? <laughs> kind of, probably I can't remember much of it it was a lot of like it was a lot of that and like a lot of like uh So relentlessly minor G. Just yeah, just my, like every single song I feel like was like a A minor A minor G F. But I think her singer wrote it at the time about like the neighbors across the street who were like telling us like stop practicing. She so said it's called we will not stop practicing. Yeah, exactly. I think it was literally, it was literally called like like fuck the neighbors or something yeah. like that. Now we've gotten to this point where like so within rock because it's just rock, which is a pretty great but limited form. Right. That there's this need for all these genre things. So of course people like you guys are, you know, shoegaze meets black metal, which I'm sure right, you right. hear every day. And, and, yeah. and uh, when we first released, came out as a band, and we weren't signed or anything, we purposefully just put the music out mm -hmm. and didn't put pictures of ourselves anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the second show we played was like this Oakland house show at like this crust punk house. And so we showed up like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, can I fucking help you, dude? Like, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm, uh, we're deaf, Evan. And like. Oh, Bummer. Yeah. yeah, and so we play, but like, uh, like all we've ever said is just like it's okay to like like this music, and then also just like be a normal guy and love your mother and yeah. like have a job and whatever you know. Like yeah. it's you don't have to like you don't have to hate everything. You can just like it's okay to like that and it's okay to like like you know Drake at the same time. Sure, you sure. know. Is there a, a deaf heaven? like statement of purpose, riff, or, or musical thing that, 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 that you could think of? There's like this blast beat part in, like right in the middle of the song Sunbather that's really, that I would consider like a quintessential thing. And it's a... Uh, When you set up chords, do you, do you think of, uh, I've noticed a lot of these is, is, is what you're not playing. You're, mm -hmm. you're leaving out certain notes within, within a chord and stuff. Is that uh -huh. like a big thing for you? Or? Because I played guitar for, like, by myself for so long, mm -hmm. a lot of what I'm, I try and play has to do with seeing if you can, can play a lead idea and a basic rhythm idea at the same time. For instance, we have this song called uh, Unrequited where the, 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 there's like a big blast blast section in it that should just be like but 
I, 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 because I was literally writing it by myself and wanted the riff to be more interesting, I just added like... Uh. Trying to picture what it's gonna be like when you've got another guitar and a bass backing you up. And yeah. it seems to me like with a lot of black metal stuff, it's these, it's not power, it's not that kind of power chord, it's these, you know, kind of kind of things. Or, yeah, there's a lot of like a, if you do a power chord, it's, it's that, exactly. It's that one. There's like a lot of open strings mm -hmm. for like a chorusy atmospheric effect, mm -hmm. and you can also find a lot of similarities with that in like. You know, like like a lot of like shoegaze, obviously, mm -hmm. and then like a lot of like alternative rock or like even stuff like the Smiths. Like mm -hmm. half of what Johnny Marr does is oh, for like, sure. you know, that yeah, kind yeah. of a thing. So like, if you, like if you throw enough, you know, reverb and like you know, delay on this, and you play it fast enough. Even like just something like that, it's like the simplest stuff, but the effect is like so so mesmerizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. It's also, is this your regular rig here? Yeah, uh, this is just like a delay. Right, right. This is uh, I could use this as a chorus, and then other than that is like we have this like a lot of like noise parts that we'll do, and this thing will just make noise until like the end of time. But my philosophy on pedals and all that is when we were writing our, our first demo, we were like really, really, really broke and I didn't have any gear. I had like this acoustic guitar my dad had given to me before I moved to San Francisco. And so I wrote that whole thing borrowing a friend's uh, laptop and figuring out like the drum machine in iTunes and then putting multiple layers of like acoustic guitar on it. And would you would you freak the sound of the acoustic guitar? Or was it all acoustic? I just stuff? used all acoustic, and like I, I'm kind of glad I did that because it was kind of like it it forces you to write a riff that is like good enough to just stand on its own, mm -hmm. and then right. yeah. and that way when you when you use pedals creatively on top of that, it'll just get better. Mm -hmm. uh, could you maybe give an example of how you use pedals and stuff? I don't know. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. For instance, I had this riff that we're working on for the next record. So you can take that and add some chorus and some well-timed delay to it. And like the riff's cool enough as it is, so then like when you add cool stuff to it, it just does like a... And then if you want to do like the Kevin Shields thing, you can do like a... So, you know, it's just like, uh, it's interesting ways to... Yeah, yeah. You know. So the, the Kevin Shields move would be, so Kevin Shields is the guitar player of My Bloody Valentine, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who does this, 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 this thing with his whammy bar. It's essentially like on the memory man, you can uh, create a uh, reverse reverb effect, which is what he does, which is like a... But right, then when right. you add that to it, it's like a... <laughs> Was my bloody event? Was it a thing when you heard them? You were like, "Oh my God!" Or did, did, was it a was it a, a a big moment of revelation? Or did it sort of sneak up on you? It's like the same kind of thing. It's like it's such good songwriting mm -hmm. that just also happens to have somebody who uses effects in like the coolest way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you made me realize or whatever. Like, there's that huge out of nowhere, like the noise holocaust or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and then live they drag it on for like 15 minutes or whatever. Sometimes I saw them, I saw them play it when they were touring that record initially and I remember I was 
walking with my back to the crowd up the balcony and it was difficult to, to walk. I remember feeling like yeah. somebody was pushing my legs and it was hard to walk up the like stairs. Like the vibration of the, of the sound, yeah. Sound. It's almost like the same uh, theory behind kraut rock is that if you do something long enough, like re repetitious enough or extreme enough or whatever, you do this long enough, like people go through these phases, almost like the different phases of guilt. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or, Diff or different emotions, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like at first- Acceptance or yeah, rejection. Yeah, yeah, where it's like, yeah. oh, what's this? This is yeah. crazy. And yeah, it's yeah. like, God, stop. And yeah. then I get like depressed, like, this is <laughs> terrible. And then eventually just leads into this like <laughs> into bliss. Into acceptance, finally, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Does that idea see seep into what you do? Like literally, uh, carbon copied there's like <laughs> the end of our set is uh is we play this song from our demo um or from our last record uh called unrequited and then it ends with this big like blasting part we know it's been a good run through of that song when the stage is literally shaking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh and it just is supposed to just hit you in the face and this thing is just doing like this type of stuff so i'll just throw it on and like here's your like So you can imagine that through like a, a PA, like with like three guys doing that and then like a huge sample. And singer dude is just like. Yeah, it's literally, yeah. And it's literally, it's like, we could tr try to combine that whole, uh, the, the, the My Bloody Valentine like idea of a noise, a noise holocaust or whatever with almost like a, I don't even know, like a, a priest like Metallica thing. And we just started doing this thing out of nowhere one night where we're all, we'll all like just literally just be like. Like awesome. this kind of thing, and like I'll hand my guitar to the crowd, and like just like hope that they'll give it back to me eventually. Thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely, man. Sweet. <laughs> Is that good? good.